while ago I'd made a video on the uh, 70 watt uh, amplifier available from eBay and I'll include a link to that video below. There are a few links that I posted with that video with experiments others were doing, in particular a gentleman uh, with a call sign F5NPV. Uh, what I thought I'd do is actually get a board made and that's, that's this board up the top here. Um, and, uh, you know, basically have a bit of a play around with some of the mods that F5MPV was doing. Uh, ha have a bit of a play around with that, post the results, uh, and, uh, you know, obviously is just have a bit of fun with uh, the amplifier. So with the board I had made, I decided to not to use the cutout approach uh, that, uh, that came with this amp. So basically... Uh, the board, let me just turn it over so you can see it. So this board comes with a, a couple of cutouts here and here. And those cutouts are used to, uh, uh, to provide support for the, uh, for the ferrite tubes, uh, for the output transformer and for the binocular core on the input transformer. Uh, so what I decided to do is just to go with a traditional approach here. What that does mean is I won't be using the bushings. There's bushings, um, metal bushings in here that are used for the... Uh, single turn, the center set tap single turn in both the input and the output. I won't be doing that, I'll be winding them um, uh, in a traditional approach. I do have a cutout uh, for the FETs here, let me just see if I can pick this up though. But instead of uh, this being supports, um, this is actually an array of diodes which is used for um, uh, which is used for uh, heat control on the on the board, but I'll go into that in a bit more detail later. As in the original board, there's a minimum of through-hole components. Um, they're primarily surface-mounted or through-hole components that are surface-mounted, as in the case for this uh, uh, this pot here. And the reason for that is, is you don't want to have any through-hole components on the bottom here because they'll short out with your uh, with your heat sink. Uh, and again, as in the original, the um, uh, that there are connections for an off-board low-pass filter. And with hindsight, uh, I think that's a bit of a mistake. I, I, I might include another rev of this board that has the LPF on the board. There's a little space up the top here that I could put it in. It's a little bit of a pain, as you'll see in the built-up board, to, to have an LPF hanging off here. I understand what it's for. Is uh, you know The ideal case is you have an off-board um, multiband LPF that, that you hook up, and then you have, uh, have that controlled... Uh, you know, by a microcontroller or something like that. The uh, PTT uh, is still the pull to ground that the uh, that this board uses. So in other words, when you want it to transmit, you pull the uh, PTT lines to ground. Um, again, that's one of the things I might replace that with a uh, with a uh, a five volt on uh, uh, on five volt. It uh, it turns the transmitter on, but uh, or maybe provide uh, some options to do one or the other. Okay, so here's the schematic, and I'll provide a link below to uh, F5NPV's great site where he does all these mods. Um, but in a nutshell, uh, so the schematic uh, pretty much is the same as the original 70 watt amplifier from eBay, with the following exceptions. So um, there is a resistance supplied at the output uh, of uh, the output of the input transformer. And uh, what this is used to is to improve uh, SWR. Uh, in this case, I'll be using a 3 watt 15 ohm, uh, but I've included, and uh, there's an, another site that did experiments here. Uh, these are the, this is the measurements that that site did um, to, uh, to de determine what are the optimal uh, resistances uh, for R6 here. So you can see it here, here's the resistor here, goes across the output windings of the input transformer, and uh, 15 ohms is the one that was chosen to, to have a reasonable SWR across all the, uh, all the bands desired. So what, one of the other changes that was made is uh, right here, and you can see there's uh, a uh, source resistor that's, uh, that's provided between the source and ground, uh, and that is a 0.17 ohm, uh, in my case a 1 watt resistor, uh, in parallel with a, a 200 nanofarad capacitor, and that's to provide some uh, de de source degeneration for stability. And the other thing is that uh, piece of the board that I showed before that has this chain of six diodes, 
And the idea is that you thermally couple this uh, little board to the heatsink, uh, and as temperature goes up, the forward voltage of the diodes drops, and uh, that's directly connected to the uh, to the bias connection right here. So you can see that uh, bias will be sort of controlled by uh, negative feedback from uh, from the, the heat sink, the heat sink uh, heating up. Um, so, like I said, the rest of it is pretty much the same. So let's uh, basically have a look at a populated board and uh, go through uh, where I sourced all the parts from. Okay, so here's the uh, built-up board here, and you can see the LPFs uh, hanging up the back here. Um, now, I forgot to mention, I, I will include um, a link to my GitHub repo, which has the Gerber files and the schematic for, for the board if you're interested in... Uh, you know, getting a couple made yourself. But let's just walk through some of the components on the board. Um, so here's that relay uh, that's used to uh, as a transmit receive switch. Um, I didn't use an SMD uh, trimmer. I decided to use a through hole trimmer and then just bend the leads over. Uh, the electrolytic caps are pretty much the same. Uh, now, as far as the output transformer goes, I try to cut a number, a couple of different things. What What is in here at the moment is a stack of T5043s, um, and uh, I, I will give a little bit of a shout out, no affiliation here to kitsandparts.com, I'll include a link to them below, they've been a great source of toroids for me over the years, um, you know, up until today, and I just ordered some T5043s from them, so a little bit of a shout out there, like I said, there's no sponsorship or anything, but uh, but anyway, kitsandparts.com if you ever need any toroids. Um, as far as the FETs go, this is one of the areas of most interest to me. Now, what's in there at the moment is a pair of genuine IRF 530s obtained from DigiKey. Because I wanted to see if there was any difference between the DigiKey, um, a genuine IRF 530s, and the kind of legions of IRF 530s that you can find out on eBay. I'll, we'll go through some of the results later on uh, and, and see, uh, see the differences there. Also, uh, just as a note... Um, I did get these uh, ferrite tubes from AliExpress because I wanted to see how would they perform uh, as uh, uh, as a binocular in the output transformer. So anyway, uh, I'll be sort of going through some results uh, for that too. Uh, so the heat sink it's mounted to, uh, I don't know where I got that from. Uh, it's just a standard aluminum heat sink. Got a pair of 12 volt fans connected to it, blowing air across the uh, fins on the heatsink. Uh, what else can I go through here? So, so here's that uh, input uh, uh, resistor here that is used to um, the, optimize the SWR of the uh, of the uh, transmitter. Uh, these two are the feedback resistors here, and I've tried a number of different. Uh, um, values all the way from 47 ohms up to what this is right now, which is 220 ohms. Uh, and then right here, you can see that 0.17 ohm um, uh, uh, source degeneration resistor together with its uh, uh, 200 nanofarad uh, capacitor in parallel. And you can see that's, uh, that's symmetrical. Um, this is a uh, 5 volt uh, regulator. Um, that's used to uh, to provide the bias voltage, and uh, the input uh, the input uh, transformer and uh, this guy here are the same binocular. It's a uh, uh, I'll I'll include a link below to which one it is. I've actually forgotten what it is at the moment. So uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's all there is. There's a, a few bits and pieces here uh, as part of the bias circuitry, but as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty simple setup. So anyway. Um, I'll include sort of a link to the uh, bill of materials for all this uh, below if you're interested in building one up yourself. Um, and now let's get on to doing some testing first with these genuine IRF 530s. Okay, so for the measurements, let's uh, start with uh, measurement of the uh, input SWR. And for that, I'm using this uh, mini VNA here. Uh, there's a short cable that connects the uh, DUT port of the mini VNA to the input port of the amplifier and then the output's just going off to a 50 ohm load. So uh, this is calibrated so uh, let's have a look at the results uh, on the screen. 
Okay, so here's the uh, um, sweep of SWR from 1 to 30 megahertz uh, using the GUI that comes with the Mini VNA. Uh, and this is uh, with the transmit receive switch in, in the off position. So in other words, it's just a complete pass through here. Um, so as you can see, we've got a, a very low SWR from, uh, from 1 megahertz all the way to 30 megahertz. Uh, nothing much to see here from 1.1 1 .1 to 4 to 1, uh, all the way down to 1.02 to 1. So let's just have a look at the uh, input impedance there. And you can see there uh, from 56 ohms down to uh, uh, a little above 49 ohms. But anyway, that's with the, uh, the uh, uh, transmit receive switch in just a pass through mode. Let's uh, change back to SWR and let's turn transmit on. And we'll let, the, uh, uh, we'll let the display settle down here. It's basically running a kind of pile of uh, sweeps through there and taking the averages and Doing, uh, doing what it does. So as you can see, it's uh, settled down now. And uh, we have this little peak here at around about seven megahertz. Uh, I'm assuming that's uh, because I still have that LPF uh, in the circuit there. But as you can see, we have a pretty acceptable SWR from one to uh, 30 megahertz. So uh, at uh, one megahertz, it's about 1.54 to one. Kind of swoops down, we have that peak at uh, 7.8 megahertz and uh, and that's at um, uh, 1.29 to 1 and then all the way up at uh, 30 megahertz it's up at 1.91 to 1. Let's have a look at the uh, input impedance and the input impedance um, shows uh, you know, kind of a, a similar uh, a similar um, sort of uh, structure there Instead of a peak, we've got a dip here at uh, 7.8 megahertz, uh, and that goes from uh, around about 57 ohms all the way down to uh, in 40 ohms as uh, input impedance. So as you can see, we've got uh, you know very acceptable uh, input SWR across the band, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, let's move on to uh, looking at the uh, output of the amplifier. Okay, so let's just quickly go through the test setup and then we'll inject some CW signals. So uh, I'm using my uh, KX3 as the source for both uh, CW and SSB. Uh, it's currently set to four watts output. We will uh, we'll, uh, uh, vary that as we go through. Got my signal generator up, up here and we'll be using that for the two-tone test later on. I've got my uh, uh, oscilloscope probing the output. And I've got the output actually going to uh, my uh, spectrum analyzer, and it's going through this uh, 30 watt uh, uh, 50 dB attenuator right here. So uh, let's get started. So first test we're going to do is a CW test. Again, as I said, four watts. Uh, I'm going to have the uh, the uh, uh, video looking at the oscilloscope, and then we'll have a look at the uh, spectrum analyzer. Okay, so we're ready to transmit here. So let's. Uh, Transmit CW, so that's with uh, transmit off, that's with transmit on. Let me uh, stop that so we can uh, take a look at it. So as you can see, it's around about 114 volts peak to peak, which is around about 31, vol uh, 31 watts of uh, output. Uh, let's have a look now at uh, the spectrum analyzer and see how effective that low pass filter is acting. Okay, so here we are on the spectrum analyzer. Let's do the same thing again. Turn transmit on, do a single sweep, and there you can see the uh, the output there. Uh, and I've got the uh, uh, the uh, the peaks listed down here. So you can see here's the primary here uh, at seven megahertz as it should be, and then we've got the third harmonic which is down at 58 uh, down uh, I guess 54 uh, dBs from from the primary. And then we've got other harmonics uh, coming through here. So you can see that uh, low pass filter is doing what it should do. Um, and I believe that is uh, FCC compliant at that level, but don't quote me on that. So let's move now to uh, looking at some single sideband signals uh, using the two-tone test that uh, you've seen before. Okay, so let's test some uh, single sideband uh, signals through this now. And uh, let's just go through the test setup again. So. The connections are all the same. Uh, I've got a 700 hertz tone and a 1900 hertz tone coming through here. Uh, so they're being mixed together 
and going to the microphone input of the uh, KX3. And then uh, we'll, uh, I've got the, the radio now is at 2 watts instead of 4 watts. And uh, so let's uh, first have a look at the output on the uh, oscilloscope and then we'll have a look at the output on the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so here we go. So first this will be the uh, unamplified signal from the, uh, from the KX3. And uh, again, that's at 2 watts and you can see there that's a very nice uh, two-tone result there. You've got a very clear uh, crossing points. You don't have any sort of distortion at the top or the bottom of the signal. No flat topping there. Uh, let's uh, now uh, run that again with the amplifier in place and let's see what we see. So here's the amplified signal. And straight away you can see that um, let's just uh, stop that uh, you can see uh, a couple of things. Let me just uh, turn the amplifier off. Uh, so one of the things that you can see here is that we don't have a completely even uh, top to this uh, to this output structure here. Um, we are getting sort of clearly defined crossing points, and it is a nice sine wave. Um, so so definitely the signal looks okay, not great. Um, now, do remember, I do have the 220 ohm uh, resistor as part of the feedback network there. So, um, what I might do later on in the video is replace that with a 47 ohm uh, resistor for the purposes of comparison. Uh, just a final note, you can see there that the peak-to-peak -peak signal is uh, around about 90 volts. Um, uh, so that's uh, you know it's obviously a little bit less than the uh, than the CW because we're we're running this at uh, at two watts instead of instead of four watts. But anyway, the proof of the pudding's in the uh, what the spectrum looks like on the spectrum analyzer. So let's move over to that now. Okay, so what we'll start with is the unamplified signal on the spectrum analyzer. So you can see that. Let's run a sweep. And you can see there, let me just turn this off. So you can see there, we've got a nice set of uh, two peaks here and all the other kind of harmonics are below here. And there are harmonics here. There's, uh, it's just uh, um, greater than about 44 uh, dBs down. So a uh, very clean pair of signals unamplified. Now let's have a look at this uh, with the amplification on. Turn the amplifier on, run the sweep. So straight away you can see, let me just turn that amplifier off. So straight away you can see that sort of Christmas tree effect that you get through uh, non-linearities in the amplifier here. So the here's the two primary peaks, so they're still looking good of course. Uh, but we've got this peak now here at, uh, uh, what is it, 6.9988 megahertz there. And that happens to be 21 dBs down from the primary signal. Now, unfortunately, 21 dBs down from the primary signal isn't that good. Uh, now, I did, uh, looking at sort of uh, F5 NPV's results, he, he was able to get a lot better performance um, out of that. Um, and, and do remember, these are the genuine RF530, so I certainly can't, uh, I certainly can't sort of uh, blame them. But there's a lot of other things to test. Um, one of the other things to note here is I'm running around about uh, four volts um, bias on the uh, gates, the IRF 530s. I have moved, uh, I have tried uh, different bias voltages and that seems to be, uh, that voltage seems to be the sort of the best I can get. Uh, if, I, if I go up, I start to get a significant uh, uh, quiescent current through the uh, through the uh, MOSFETs, uh, and if I go down, the uh, nonlinearities increase. So, so anyway, uh, what we'll uh, have a look at next is what this looks like with uh, uh, three uh, three watts input, and then with uh, half a watt input. Okay, I've set it up for three watts of input. Let's uh, have a look at what that looks like. Run a sweep. Uh, turn that off. So you can see there the uh, the situations deteriorated a little bit. Um, so we've gone from instead of being 21 dBs between the uh, the primary signals and the and the harmonics, we're now down to 20 dBs 
uh, between the uh, primary signal and the harmonic. So let's try that again, uh, and this time with half a watt uh, on input. There we go. Run a sweep. So you can see that is significantly different. So you can now we have uh, between the primary and the uh, and the uh, harmonics, we've now got uh, 20. What's that? 29 dBs uh, between the primary and the harmonics. So as you can see, as you increase the input power, those harmonics are also increasing, which is certainly the expected result. So what I might do now is, uh, you know, just uh, for fun, let's um, uh, replace that stack of uh, T5043. So let me just pan down so you can see that for yourself. So if you have a look on the output transformer here, this is a stack of six T5043s here. What I'm going to do is replace that with those, uh, as I mentioned before, these little... Uh, ferrite tubes that I got from AliExpress and this one's ready to go I've already had it in circuit and played around with it a bit um, so we'll replace that in circuit and we'll see uh, what the effect is okay so there's that uh, binocular in circuit uh, right there as you can see uh, let's have a look at the uh, traces on the oscilloscope and uh, the spectrum analyzer okay so here we go so that's uh, unamplified let's uh, turn the amplifier on pause that and you can see the effect is that the output uh, is slightly decreased. If you recall, this is again 2 watts input. If you recall, on 2 watts input, the output power through the amplifier was 90 volts peak to peak. Um, so uh, it, using those ferrite tubes has slightly decreased the, uh, uh, the output peak to peak. So let's have a look at the spectrum analyzer now. Okay, let's fire that off. Run a sweep. Uh, turn that uh, amplifier off. Uh, and you can see here the linearity has slightly uh, decreased. So if you recall, there was 21 dBs between the primary and the harmonics with the stack of T5043s. Now we're down to 20 and a half. So a slight degradation in the, uh, uh, in the linearity of the amplifier. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, do the same test, but one of these BN forty three seven zero five ones that I just got up the uh, just picked up the other day. So I'll get that set up, installed, and we'll run some tests. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the BN forty three seven zero five one installed in circuit. Let's have a look at the results on the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so here we are. Let's fire that off. That's unamplified. There it is, there's the signal amplified. And as you can see, let me just turn that off. So as you can see, the, uh, the output amplitude is sort of roughly halfway between the uh, T5043 stack on the high end, if you recall, that was at 90 volts, uh, and the, um, the ferrite tubes, which were down uh, closer to uh, 86 volts. So anyway, interesting. So uh, let's move over to the spectrum analyzer and check out the, uh, the, um, what the uh, harmonics looks like. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, output harmonics. Run a sweep. Let's turn that off. And you can see the result um, is about there's a 20 dB difference between that, and, and it does vary. Uh, it does go up and down, only just single sweep there. But there's about a 20 dB difference between the primary signal and the uh, uh, and that uh, harmonic signal, uh, which you can see at peak three right here. So again, it's uh, both the ferrite tube and the uh, BN437051 seem to underperform the stack of T5043s both in output power as well as linearity, but uh, not by much. What I might do now is uh, put the uh, stack of T5043s back in. That, that was kind of the baseline that we started with. And then I do have a pair of uh, RD16 uh, 
uh, HHF1 uh, RF MOSFETs. Uh, what I might do is I'll put those in circuit and uh, I'll see if we uh, get any improvement one, uh, one way or the other with the output. Now I do have to be careful, the um, uh, RD16s, uh, they can only take uh, 16 watts uh, maximum uh, through each one, so I'll, I will have to uh, probably wind down the output power a little bit. But uh, anyway, I'll do that and uh, we'll see if there's, uh, see what the effect is. Well, I was going to do the RD16 uh, HHF ones in this video, but it doesn't look like I'll be able to get to that. I, I started playing around with it. Uh, one of the challenges is the, uh, uh, instead of going gate drain source, it goes gate source drain. I sort of knew that, but uh, it turned out that I'd have to have too many sort of flying leads to uh, make it happen. Um, so what I'm going to do is probably get a little, uh, build a little adapter board that I can put on this so I don't have leads flying everywhere. Uh, obviously leads flying everywhere is never good with RF. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this uh, video here. Uh, I'll definitely do some follow-up videos. There's all sorts of playing around I want to do with this uh, with this amplifier. Uh, change the MOSFETs. Uh, have a, you know, vary the, uh, the feedback resistors and a few other things. But I will make a wrap here. Uh, for those who have stuck out this long, uh, I think what I might do is... Um, uh, for the first three people that send me an email, I will, uh, and they're from the US, uh, I, I can't do international postage, sorry, but first three people that send me an email, my email's in uh, YouTube contacts, uh, I'll send you out a, uh, uh, I'll send you out one of these boards, um, and, uh, and Tom, I'll send you one out anyway, so, uh, Anyway, that's a wrap for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do more experiments with this to come in following videos. And uh, that's all for now. See you later.